In this week's Sega Limited, 4.6 Dev 2 release, 4.5.1 Maintenance release, 3.6.2 Maintenance release, so yeah, a lot of releases, and of course, there's our Creator Spotlight, Tip of the Week, and Game of the Week. Welcome to Sega Limited, your weekly news video for Kodou related news. I'm Voilin, and I've been lurking in the shadows, watching the PRs for 4.6. A new dev release was made for the 4.6 update, which will bring some very nice features. The past weeks I've been keeping track of PRs which get created and merged, such as this PR for speed controls in the in-engine game window, which will be so great for testing games and seeing where things could possibly go wrong, like for bug fixing and such. This is an awesome new addition, same as the Lip Godot PR, which might not be useful for most Godot developers, but to more advanced users, this is great news. Because with this PR, you can basically compile Godot as a library instead to use in other projects or like to embed Godot into other applications. Basically, running Godot will now be possible outside of the standalone editor, the standalone application, which could be great for creating automated tests. And the goal is basically to provide a minimal API, which will allow you to use Godot's features through a Godot instance from your host application. The target audience for this feature isn't big. It's mainly used for tool makers in the creation uh, into some other applications, other software, other libraries. Some advanced engine users might be able to do some crazy stuff with this or like some nice fun stuff with this. Research and simulation projects could also find this helpful in some ways, I guess. Or just for anyone who wants more modularity when using Godot. But yeah, TLDR, this PR adds more flexibility to how Godot can be used by developers, which is always a great thing. Lib Godot still needs some work though, as this is just the beginning and a very basic implementation for the time being. But I'm looking forward to seeing how this whole lip Godot thing will evolve over time. And then looking at other additions to the dev release, we can see Objective-B, a feature I discussed in the last Signal Emitted episodes, which allows you to make snapshots of your running um, game instance, project instance, to compare against different time points. Then there's also improved automatic LOD and yeah, there's quite a bit more. I will probably go through all the new features the moment that the first feature freeze happens for the 4.6 update. But yeah, that's still some weeks to probably some months away. And before we go to the creator spotlight, a big shout out to these amazing people who support me on Ko-fi. Their support means a lot to me and if you want to become one of these amazing people, you can by going to my Ko-fi page and becoming a supporter. There will be a link in the description. And then let's go over to the creator spotlight. For the creator spotlight this week, I present to you Cashew Oldu, who is a teacher in real life, which do add value to his tutorials. Cashew Oldu makes game dev development tutorials with recently a focus on more shader related stuff. Something which people tend to struggle with when working on games, the whole shader stuff. More videos about shaders are always welcome. If you see any videos which pique your interest, be certain to check out his channel and to subscribe to him if you want to stay up to date with his future videos. He provides a lot of good value, so check him out. And there was not only the 4.6 Dev 2 release, but there were also two maintenance releases. First up, the 4.5.1 release. This is basically a maintenance release, so it's just bug fixes. Yeah, basically a lot of things that got backported from the 4.6 update. I wanted to bring this up because if you're using 4.5, which most of you probably are, you should probably move to 4.5.1 just to have a more stable experience. Things might be going wrong when trying to export your games. Normally nothing will break because it's just a maintenance release, so there's basically no reason not to switch to 4.5.1. And then the second release is kind of different. It's the 3.6.2 release, which is mainly the result of a change Google made. So to make certain Godot version 3 developers don't run into any issues when developing or updating their games and projects for Android, the Android API got a updated in this maintenance release. So yeah, it's basically because Google decided to change some stuff that Godot needed to make an update for this release. 3.7 is also still coming. It's around like 70% done according to the milestones on GitHub. It is coming. People are still using Godot 3. Not 100% certain why, but I guess there are just add-ons and sites and features that they prefer more in Godot 3. But this is one of the great things about Godot that they actually maintain the older version as well. 
for people who cannot switch for any reason. So you're not left in the dust if something stops working like Android support. <laughs> And then let's talk a little bit more about Material Maker. I've talked about Material Maker a few times already, so I'll keep it short this time. But the Godot team published a showcase of Material Maker in their blog post, which is worth read if you want to learn more about the whole project. They interview the developer and go more into depth of how Material Maker became what it is today. It's a long article, but quite interesting, so give it a read whenever you find the time. There will be a link in the description as usual. And then let's go over to Game of the Week. And for this week, I present to you Road to Vostok. A game that a lot of you might know because of the whole Unity thing that happened. Basically, when Unity did its whole, like, let's do bad stuff, they decided to switch development from Unity to Godot. And basically what Road to Vostok is, it's a single player survival game set in a post apocalyptic apoly, apocalyptic wow post apocalyptic oh wow post apocalyptic border zone between Finland and Russia survive loot and plan and prepare to cross the border into Vostok which is a permadeath zone where one mistake can end it all. There has been a new demo release as the release of the game is getting closer and closer. Give the demo a try and wishlist it if you want to stay up to date with the release of the game and want to buy it as soon as it comes out. And then up to tip of the week. If you're like me, probably not the case, but bear with me. If you're like me and you're using um, GD extensions in your project or add-ons or um, your project is just quite big and suddenly you're experiencing strange behavior and strange bugs that you just cannot explain. Then there is this very helpful little trick that I've been using to make certain that it's not Godot's fault, which can easily be tested by deleting the .godot folder from your project. This has come in handy so much to just delete that folder whilst working on GD Gozen and on my video editor. And oftentimes when I was experiencing strange behavior, this almost always solved the issue. I don't exactly know like why it suddenly stops working and doing that fixes the issue. I guess it's GD extension stuff, but anyway, it's a good thing to take in mind. If something starts behaving strangely and not expected and you know, you're certain that you are not the cause of it, try deleting the .godot folder and relaunch the project so you can remake all the files for the .godot folder. So yeah, tip of the week. And then it's already the end of the episode. First of all, a big thank you to all my Coffee supporters. Thank you very much for your support. Thanks to the new people who joined recently on Coffee. And yeah, Signal Admitted is weekly. I am starting to consider of doing it bi-weekly because it's taking time. It's causing a little bit too much stress to like get everything out on time on Friday because this video, it's filmed on Friday, but <laughs> oh. With the time that it is right now, I won't be able to finish editing. It will go live on Saturday. So I have been polling on both on Discord and YouTube while I show too. And on Discord, people are a fan of the weekly uploads. On uh, YouTube, people are a fan of the bi-weekly uploads. I'm still kind of considering while I show too. It's, it's, yeah. Life has been kind of stressful and it's also part of the reason why I'm having pain in my arms and in my leg. I'm trying to reduce my stress a little bit so I might go to bi-weekly videos for the time being. I'm not 100% certain yet. I'll see how next week goes. If I upload next week, then it will stay weekly. If I don't upload next week, then it might switch to bi-weekly. Let's, let's see. But yeah, anyway, subscribe to stay up to date and I'll see you all hopefully next week. Bye bye.